Hey guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana and today's video is going to be a topic of conversation. Um, let me tell you why. I want to talk about consolidation and I want to tell you why I am aware of um, the peer pressure, the influencer pressure, uh, the common um, echoes uh, from the powers that be in the hobby telling everybody to consolidate, but I'm here to say I am not doing it. And um, I'm going to tell you why consolidation became a thing, a thing, and I'm going to tell you why I'm not uh, following down that path. I've got a bunch of reasons why I am anti-consolidation. I, I do understand consolidation from the perspective of an investor, but we're going to look at some things that may or may not substantiate the claims that uh, buying the biggest and best 1% of the 1% of a player's cards is the way to collect. And so as, uh, as I go through this, you know I'm not organized. I'm going to do my best to stay organized, but I'm going to share some data on Card Ladder uh, featuring the 86 Fleer Jordan as an example. But then we're looking at a little bit broader picture as well on what's going on with cards over the last six months to two years to include all different genres of cards. Um, basically, this is just a counter argument to all of the talking heads that are out there saying, you shouldn't have 25,000 cards in your collection. You should have 20 cards, the 20 best cards you can get. Sell your 25,000, put all of it into the 20 best cards because that's what you should collect. Uh, and as all videos, uh, I, I try to make a distinction between uh, collector and investor. Uh, I think most of the people out there that are professing consolidate, consolidate, consolidate are preaching from a perspective uh, as an investment. The safest place to put your money is in the rarest, low pop, most sought after, most likely to be relevant 15 years from now cards. And so uh, I don't think, or at least I hope all the people that are out there screaming to consolidate your cards, sell all your silvers, buy golds, sell all this, buy one of ones. I hope those people aren't telling people what to collect, right? That is up to each of us individually. Uh, and I try never to do that on my channel because, you know, if, if, I mean, I'll show you what I collect. I collect basketball cards and I only collect probably five players and then a couple of sets and then I collect soccer cards. If I was one of those people, I would be telling everybody to stop collecting Harry Potter, stop collecting uh, Pokemon, stop collecting baseball, stop collecting football, go collect basketball and soccer. I, you know, I don't do that on my channel, but there are people out there that just tell you to collect what they collect because it makes them feel better. Uh, and I do not have anybody in particular in mind. So this is not a, a shot or a shot taken at anybody out there. I just want to give my counter argument to this theory that consolidation is the way to go for investing or or even for collecting. I don't think it is. I'm not going to ascribe to this theory or practice consolidation. And let me tell you why. And I will give you one caveat. I have consolidated the number of players that I collect into uh, players that I feel will be historically relevant forever, but I have not consolidated the number of cards, the types of cards, or anything like that. In fact, I've kind of gone the other way, uh, and I'm not the only one, and I'm about to give you evidence that other people are starting to buy lower end, higher pop cards, rather than the super low supply, high end grail cards in PSA 10 slabs. So uh, stay with me here. I'm going to kind of take it point by point. I did write some notes down over here. Uh, but uh, first and foremost, what, what are we being told? We're being told to consolidate by a lot of people in the hobby. Here's why I, uh, I'm not necessarily, uh, I'm against it uh, from the collector aspect and it's very clear why. You shouldn't tell anybody else what to do with their collection. There are people out there that literally have million card collections. Uh, I've got, I think, over 2,000 slab cards in my vault. Some of those cards are worth eight bucks, probably in the slab, and it costs 19 to grade with PSA. Some of them are probably worth 20 bucks. Some of them are worth six figures. Uh, so I've got a vast array of cards. That's how I like to collect. I like, uh, to funnel up to very important cards, but I don't like to get rid of my lower end Jordan cards to fund that. So it may take me more time to grail up my collection. That's fine because for me, a sharpshooter PSA 10 matters. A Soaring Stars PSA 10 matters. 
You can't tell someone in the hobby to go sell all their, you know, 87, um, 80, you know, 1989 Donruss and Fleer Griffey Juniors to go buy, you know, a 101 Masterpiece Griffey Junior from the 90s. You can't tell somebody that because you don't know what they're collecting for. You don't know their reasons for collecting. My reasons for collecting aren't necessarily to have the best high-end Jordan collection in the world. My reasons for collecting are to get as many mail days as possible, share as much as possible, create as much content as possible, learn as much as possible, and amass as many cards as possible. I was even like that as a kid. I, even as a kid, I remember I was collecting baseball in the late 80s, and some of you guys, I made a confession. Yes, I collected baseball in the 80s, right? Only baseball, to be quite honest with you. Very little basketball or football. But I remember, even then, I had this prospecting bug and I remember going into my freshman year of high school, and we had a couple guys that did cards back then. That was real, you know, cards were real hot back then. It was around 1989, and I had like 65 Marquise Grissom rookie cards because he was my guy. That was my prospect. And then Jerome Walton as well. Uh, some of you guys may have remembered them. Luckily, cards back then didn't cost a lot, so I didn't lose a lot of money as a kid. But uh, I remember trying to amass vast quantities of certain cards. So even back then, I had that bug. That's how I collect. That is clearly not how some of the higher tier collectors collect. And that is absolutely fine. I have really good friends who are smarter than me, uh, have more money than me, have collected longer than me, know 100 times more than me about cards, specifically Jordans, who will trade hundreds of cards that matter. Now, I'm not saying grails, but they matter. Four figure cards for one $300,000, $400,000 card. There is nothing wrong with that. Uh, but that is not my path. And so I want all of you guys out there that are situated like me to resist the temptation and to think through this with me today on this video and to eliminate the anxiety of this pressure of being forced to consolidate. Consolidating is the way to go. It's not for everybody. It's not for me. And I'm fine with it. And I have no anxiety whatsoever about it. And I love the fact that I've got thousands of Jordan cards in my vault instead of 20 of the 40 best Jordan cards. That's just not how I want to do this. Uh, and so just a couple other bullet points. Quality versus quantity. Um, I'm not necessarily choosing low quality cards, but I am not going to prioritize quality over quantity so much that I'm sitting on my ass for three months uh, or I only have 20 or 40 cards to share with people. That's to me is just not fun. And so uh, for that reason, I am okay. I'm not gonna say quantity over quality, but I'm gonna say, here's my, here's my equation. It's not a less than or greater than, it's an equals to. Quantity equals quality. They aren't the same, but they are equal in that I care about both. I care about having all of the PSA 8 1992 Topps Gold cards. I care about having all the 1991 Skybox Junk Wax Base Jordan PSA 8s and PSA 10s. Guess what else I care about? I care about, you know, getting a Skybox, you know, a Rubies Jordan. I care about getting a Super Rave Jordan. I do care about the Grail stuff, but I don't care about that at the expense of getting rid of every single, you know, Jordan card I have under $10,000, pooling them together, selling them to get one card. That's not how I do it. And again, I'm not saying that's a bad way to do things. I'm just saying that's not how I do it. And so, uh, right, let's see. Okay, so we're going to talk about, that's the collecting side. So I think everybody can agree, even the people that are preaching consolidation, I don't think those people are telling uh, others or sharing with others their theory on consolidation because this is how you should collect. I don't think anybody's that naive or arrogant or condescending. I think they're doing it uh, almost... Um, in a manner of goodwill, trying to share with newer collectors by what matters, by what you think is going to matter 10 years from now. And, and I get that. So I get that perspective. From an investment perspective, they think that will be best. And, and will it be best? Maybe. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Uh, you know, will a $100,000, um, you know, Michael Jordan card outperform one hundred one thousand dollar uh one hundred different one thousand dollar michael jordan cards over the next 10 years i don't think anybody's got the answer and if somebody tells you they have the answer they're lying straight to your face because nobody's got a crystal ball we can look at past history uh you know to make that decision and make that determination and, and guesstimate and prognosticate and hope to conclude what will happen in the future but nobody's got a crystal ball so we don't know what's gonna happen so you got your 100 jordan cards versus your one jordan card 10 years from now which one's better uh and, and by the way i've got another analogy going back like 
I'm the kind of person, um, and, and I might put a poll up here, right, for my YouTube uh, viewers and subscribers. Uh, would you rather have like one Ferrari or would you rather have four BMW 5 Series, uh, four different colors in your garage? I'm taking the four BMWs. That's just me. That's how I roll. I would rather have variety. I think that's cooler to have four different cool cars. And again, this is a big hypothetical over one Ferrari. That's how I do it. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know if everybody else out there is like that or not, but uh, going back to the analogy of the of the Jordan card, would you rather have 100 different Jordan $1,000 cards or one $100,000 Michael Jordan card? You know my answer to that. It's I would like to have all 101 cards, right? But if I had to choose, I had to choose one or the other, I'm taking the $100, $100 cards because that's how I collect. I like variety, I like set collecting, I like closure, I like chasing a goal, and that is collecting every Michael Jordan card in the world. It's a goal that I'm never gonna get to. It's it's like Zeno's paradox. You can look it up on the internet. Uh, basically, if you keep getting halfway to your destination, you will always get closer, but you will never arrive. Think about that, Zeno's paradox. Uh, if I'm 100 feet away and I go 50 feet, I'm halfway there. If I go half of that, I'm 25 feet. If I go half of that, I'm 12 and a half feet. If I go half of that, I'm 6.25 feet. If I go half of that, it, you get the point. I'm getting closer, but I'm never going to get to my destination. And that's what Michael Jordan collecting is for me um, because I'm not trying to get the 20 best cards where you can reach your goal. I'm trying to get every card in the highest grade, which is impossible and it will never happen. And I'm okay with that because the journey is where the joy is. So um, the, the one thing I think uh, pro consolidation people, uh, the 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 foundation for their argument that you should consolidate your collection from an investment perspective is that there will be um the supply is known we know the supply of and i'm going to use a card that i own and versus cards that i also own so the the supply of a pmg red jordan 97 uh is, a, is probably a set number. Well, we know there's only 90 in the world, and we know we can look at the pop report, and it may go up or down, but it's probably cracking resub. So we know that is gonna be a paltry supply. And right now, we know what the demand is. The pro-consolidation influencers are alleging that they know what that demand will be 10 years from now. And I don't think they do. Do I disagree with them? Do I think that a PMG Red will not be highly sought after 10 years from now? No, I think it will be very highly sought after. That's why I bought one. And it's not an investment. It's my pride and joy and my baby and all that. And so it's my grail and the, you know, the foundation of my collection. Um, so I don't necessarily disagree with them. I only disagree with the aspect that they're saying the same thing about Prism Golds. They're saying the same thing about you know one of one cards from the year 2020. They're saying the same thing about Logo Man's. Those are very different cards. Those are very, very different cards than a 97 red PMG. They just are. In fact, I, I read there's over 1,100 one of one cards just in the most recent flawless basketball release. 1,100 one of one cards in one product? That seems like a lot to me. So I would be really careful uh, of, you know, even if you do embrace consolidation, you need to be damn careful what you consolidate into. Uh, and that's just a word of warning to everybody out there. Um, do we think Prism Golds are gonna be relevant 10 years from now? I, I do. Uh, but do I think, uh, you know, a Chronicles one of one of anybody is gonna be relevant 10 years from now? I do not. I do not think it's gonna be relevant in any way, shape, or form. And I don't even think it's gonna be relevant more relevant than a random Michael Jordan refractor PSA 8 from the 90s. I do not. And that's pretty much why I'm putting my money into the stuff that I know and that I've seen for the last 30 years what the demand is for these cards rather than guessing what the demand is going to be for a card from the year 2020 or 2021 for a player who hasn't completed his career, hasn't accomplished anything, and then a product that has no history uh, or at least not a long history and then you don't have three decades of evidence of whether or not the demand is going to grow for a particular product or player or card or grade or you know parallel etc. So uh, there's a million reasons why I have shifted my money very consistently into uh, 90 stuff and early 2000 stuff because we've got more evidence of what people want and what people have selected as the relevant parallels and inserts from those years, right? So that's another thing. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, just to give you a list of why I'm anti-consolidation. More cards means more variety. 
uh, more mail days so I can make mail day videos and share them with you. Everybody likes opening the mail and getting a card. Do I, would I like to open the mail and forgot it, I'd be shaking, but and get a PMG green? Yeah, of course I would, but I would also like to open the mail and get 4,000, uh, you know, different $700 Michael Jordan cards as well or whatever. Uh, there's more IG posts, right? We can share our collection more with social media and that's become a really fun thing. And it's not a flexing, beat your chest, you know, scream to the you know ceiling how great you are. I'm sharing PSA 8s that are $20 and I'm getting, you know, hundreds of likes on these posts because people are like, damn, I remember that card and that pack. And it doesn't matter that it's a PSA 8. Like, the, the videos that I make on this channel about Jordan cards that are worth you know 200 to 400 dollars get more views than the ones I do on these grails that people are never going to see or hold or have in their collection and uh, that's not a coincidence there's a lot of people out there that think like me um, that you can find joy in quantity in more mail days in more cards in more variety and so that's another one more IG posts right sharing it with people on social media or sharing it with other people at card shows or whatever trade nights etc I don't get to go to those but uh, more budget friendly obviously you can pace yourself better um, and you can buy more consistently in other words you guys see my mail days I bought hundreds of cards in the last three months 90 you know 90% of them have Michael Jordan on the front of those cards by buying lower end cards I get uh uh, to buy consistently I feel like I'm participating more in the hobby if I wanted to go buy and I'm gonna try to think of a card let's say a Michael Jordan uh, star rubies right serial number to 50 that might cost me a hundred thousand dollars depending on the grade well that would take me a a lot of sacrifice I have to sell a lot of the cards that I have worked so hard and care so much about number one and number two I would uh, have to take you know nine months off eight months off and just sell and never buy and have no mail days and not open any cards and not share videos with you guys i'm not willing to make that sacrifice that is not what appeals to me in any way shape or form if somebody today offered me a pmg green for my entire collection even if the pmg green was worth more i would not do it because i can't replicate what i've done i can't go back and get some of these cards that are in my collection a lot of them i can right but some of them i can't i would not be willing to make that sacrifice because it's more about collecting at this point at this stage of my hobby career than it is about investing and i think a lot of people share those same kind of instincts and i'm about to show you some uh graphics i know i've been staring at the camera talking a lot but let me finish uh i've become more collector than investor so that was leading me to my next point i personally started back in 2015 ish 16 and i was buy low sell high buy Giannis sell for a lot more money make money rinse repeat with Ben Simmons Fox Jalen Brown Simon Anthony Simons Kevin Porter Jr. blah 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 all the Donches all that stuff I did all that stuff right I was 100% collector uh, now I am honest to God probably 85 percent uh, i'm sorry i was 100 percent investor back then now about seven years later six seven eight years later sorry my phone's going off i am probably 90 percent collector 10 percent investor i dive deeply into the data i care uh passionately about what cards are worth or what uh they should sell for and what the fair market value is but it's not because I want to buy them and sell them. Uh, it's because I want to make sure I buy them at the right price point so I can buy more cards, right? That's why everybody cares about card ladder. It's not just for investors, right? It's not, you know, market movers or whatever. It's not just about investing. It's about making sure you pay the right price for the card that you want to put in your collection so you can buy more cards with your money and, you know, use your budget more wisely and more thoughtfully. And so uh, I have transitioned to become significantly more of a collector than investor. And I think you guys who watch my channel, uh, I think if you've listened to me scream at the screen enough, you would probably agree with that um, but I'm never gonna be a hundred percent collector because I'm always gonna like to make money because that allows me to go put that money back in the cards and buy more cards uh, more education the more you buy and the more cards you have the more cards you look at the more cards you share the more cards you talk about the more educated you are on the hobby that's why card shop owners know so much about cards that's why dealers know so much about cards um, you know collectors obviously know tons about cards because they're collecting the cards keeping them and talking about the damn things a lot if I've only got 20 cards I may know a hell of a lot about those 20 cards but I would rather know a pretty good amount about my 2500 cards than just know everything about these 20 cards that I could share with you 
you. That's just my personal opinion. So more education comes from looking at more potential buying opportunities, studying those cards, studying those prices, studying the sets that they came from. Uh, and I think that's been so much of uh, my enjoyment on the channel over the last, whatever it is, 17, 18 months that I started it is I've learned so damn much about cards. Like people message me on Instagram all the time, Cajun, thanks, you're really teaching us a lot about cards. I'm like, what's? it's really funny. It's not like it's in here. Like I didn't collect in the 90s. I didn't know any of this shit. I am figuring out myself sharing it 30 minutes later with you guys because I just did the research and it's fresh in my mind and I've got it pulled up on the screen. So every message that I get from people, I try to let them know, by the way, I'm learning at the same rate as you, the same things as you, uh, the same way as you. Uh, it's just probably easier for you guys because you get it in a nice little nutshell with this dude from Louisiana. But uh, but I'm doing this, the, the, the research, the data, the card ladder, the trading card database, you know, pulling the cards, checking, comp I'm doing all that. I don't know that stuff off the top of my head. It's like uh, it's like practicing law. People call me and ask me a law question. Yeah, sometimes I have the answer, but usually I got to go look at a book, right? I know where to find the answer. I don't necessarily know every answer to every legal question out there, especially when it you know uh, gets outside of my area of expertise, which is real estate. Um, and then lastly, here it is in a nutshell. I'm just telling you, man, look, it's more fun to have thousands of cards that are worth a few hundred bucks than it is to have you know a hundred cards that are worth thousands of bucks and or hundreds of thousands of bucks. It just is. It's just more fun. There's more to talk about. There's more variety. Um, you know, it's like it's like having you know multiple wives. Why would you have one wife? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking about that. Uh, please, God, nobody clip that, right? I'm clearly joking about that. Uh, but look, let me share some stuff with you on Car Ladder. Here we go. And this is just some stuff that I pulled up that I thought was interesting, and I hope I can remember why I pulled it up. I'm using the '86 Fleer Jordan as an example. Okay, I own the card in ten. I own uh, the card, uh, a couple of them in eights, uh, stickers in eight base, whatever. So I, I have the big one and I have a couple of eights and I used to have about 40 of them, right? And I have since uh, moved those cards to put money into different Jordan cards. You know my story, I've told it a hundred times. Uh, so I just want to show you, so this is uh, over the last two years what the PSA 10's done. Everybody, if I said, hey, what's the PSA 10 Jordan 86 Fleer rookie card done over the last two years? 99.9% .9 of people who are in the hobby, even if they never look at social media or listen to me or anybody else, would say, oh, the card's down, right? So we know the card's down, right? So this is not this is not evidence that consolidating is bad, right? You put your money into big cards, look what big cards do. No, you can't extrapolate like that. This is just one card. And then the argument would be, well, it's a high pop card. 318 is a lot of cards, right? This is not a pop, you know, 11, a PMG Red. This is a totally different card. I get that. There's all kinds of arguments that cut both ways. I just wanted to show you that this particular Grail card is the, uh, is the card that we're going to look at today, okay? Uh, I've got pulled up the index. This is over the last six months, and this is what I'm trying to get at. I don't want to show you the data first. I was trying to explain, and this is why I don't think consolidation is, it might be right. In the long run, everybody who's screaming to sell your you know, 1,500 cards and go buy eight of them uh, that are worth a lot more money, that are rarer and lower pop, they may be right 10 years from now, but they may not necessarily be right 10 years from now, and they definitely aren't right in the last six months, and let me show you why. Um, I've got the Jordan 86 Fleer pulled up. This is one example, but I'm gonna get you into the indexes in a second. So this is one example, this is the Jordan 86 Fleer. Uh, I've got it sorted over the last six months, which cards have done the best percentage-wise. The eights outperformed the seven, which has outperformed the six. Those are the only three grades that have gone up, okay? In 180 days, and we're not talking about a few sales, this is not an anomaly. 185 sales, 118 sales, 79 sales. Up 27%, up 14%, up 5%, almost 6%. The 10 is the fourth worst performing. It's down 16%. Uh, the nine is down 35%. We're talking about a card that was $20,000 that is now worth $13,000. And if you look at the net loss, these cards are up, this card's up 1,400 per card, right? It's a five, it was a $5,000 card. So it, six months ago, I could have had uh, 190,000 uh, PSA 10. So what is that? That is uh, 18. Uh, nope, that's not right. Yeah, 18. 10. No, I did that wrong. I'm not even going to do the math. I could have a lot of PSA 8s for the same price as one PSA 10 six months ago. The return on my money would have been plus 
27%. The return on my money on the PSA 10 would have been a 17% ass kicking. So that's a 43% difference in the rate of return on those two cards from this mid four figure card, uh, you know, $5,000 card versus a 190,000 grail card. And again, People are going to scream, it's not a Grail card. It's not a Grail card. Well, it is because the, the demand is so incredibly high for that card compared to the supply, it makes it a Grail card. And that is why it's a $158,000 card or something around there right now. Uh, so that's the first example. How about the last two years? Well, you're like, oh, that's only the last six months. What about the last two years? What if we go back to the peak in 2021? We're just now past that peak March 2021 bubble, right? We're in May, June. We're in June 1st. Today's June 1st. Let's look at these cards over the last two years. Everything's down. That's not a surprise. Look at the card that's performing the worst, as in has weathered the storm the best. Pop 2,363, $4,554 uh, PSA 6 card. About a $4,500 card has been pretty much even. After that, it's the next, high, next worst grade, next highest pop. After that, it's the next worst grade, highest pop. So the highest pop card is down 25%. The grail card with only 318 in existence is down 44%, down $124,000. Now, a lot of this has to do with the rise and the run that preceded these last two years. Obviously, the cards that went up the most have the ability to come down the most and probably would in some manner, way, shape, or form, you know, whichever card spiked the quickest in the shortest amount of time will come down the quickest in the shortest amount of time, right? All other things being, being equal, remaining equal. Sorry, I'm very popular. Um, I hope it's not debt collectors. I hope it's not, uh, not people calling in my loans. I'm just kidding, of course. Here's what I want to show you. So leading into that, what has happened before these two years? I've got this pulled up. I've got January 1st, 2018 to June 1st, 2023. So we're going back a little five, four and a half, about four and a half years. Look at the best performing cards over the last four and a half years. It's the 10. Okay. It is the 10. When we take into account that crazy spike, right? And then after that, it's the nine. And then after that, it's the eight. And then after that, it's the seven. And then after that, it's the six. Do you notice a descending numerical pattern? And so over the last five years, everything that the consolidators are screaming has rang true, right? So we can both be right. Consolidating, uh, co pro-consolidationists, uh, or of the opinion that let's look at the big picture over the course of the next 10 years. It's going to follow the course of the prior 10 years. The bigger, the better grade, the lower pop, the, the higher end card is going to outperform the lower end card. They are 100% right, but I think that's where this consolidation claim is coming from. They're looking at just the past four, five, six years, because that's where most of these talking heads have been hyper-focused as far as what they do buy and sell. Okay, so here's where I wanted to take you off the Jordan. You know, like Everybody's like, you're talking about one card, you can't learn anything from one card, it's just your card, you're talking about your 86 Fleer, blah, 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 you talk about it all the time, we're tired of it. What about cards in general? What about cards in general? High-end cards are outpacing low-end cards. The higher-end uh, uh, higher cards, lower pop cards, are always gonna outperform the higher pop, lower, uh, lower end cards, right? Well, no, they're not actually, believe it or not. So on card ladder, they've got these indexes, right? They've always had wrestling, soccer, football, basketball, baseball, whatever. Well, they've expanded. Now they've grouped all those sports together and gaming card companies and all that crap together. And now we can look and we can look and see. Let's do this. Let's start from the bottom. Let's not talk about basketball. That's a sad story for all of us that are watching this channel. Look at the fourth worst performing index. The fourth worst performing index is low pop cards over the last, oh crap, what did I just do? Over the last six months, down 33%. Then we keep scrolling up. High end cards are the next worst performing, down 27%. And there's probably some overlap there, right? Usually the low pop cards or the high end cards, there's a lot of overlap, not perfect, right? You get it, but like, you know, a PMG green would fit both of those. It's a very low pop and it's a very high end, right? And so you get the point. All the Playmakers Theater, you can go through all the Grail Jordan cards. You can go through all the Grail Kobe cards, whatever. Uh, you can go through all the RPAs for NT and all that stuff. Yes, the low pop and high end, usually there's some overlap. So no coincidence here. High end cards are down 27%. But look what's here. Half as bad as the low pop is the mid pop. And I've got to look at here to see how, you know, what is card, cards whose pop counts are between 31 and 199. So some of us who are new to the hobby would say, well, that's very low pop. Some of us like myself who are not new to the hobby and collect cards from the 90s uh, would say, 
That is high pop, but we'll call it mid pop. Now you know mid pop is 31 to 199. Half as bad. Mid pop is performing twice as well as low pop. Okay, would you have guessed that? Probably not. Low end cards, that is cards whose last sale was less than $500 are outperforming high end cards uh, by a factor of two, twice as good. Right, And that's what I'm getting at, is that we don't know what the future holds. If I'd have told you a year ago or six months ago that low-end cards, high-pop cards would outperform low-pop cards, high-end cards, you'd have laughed me out of the room. Y'all would have made a video in response to this saying, Cajun Cardboard's an idiot. He's drinking the water in Louisiana, which he was told never to do. Uh, actually, we have good water in Louisiana. Just not, not the swamp water, but like the stuff that comes out of the hoses. Uh, Y'all still drink from hoses, right? In the rest of this country, I assume. Um, low pop, twice as well performing over the last six months as high end. And then I want to keep going up here. Mid end, 11.24%. But here's what I really want to show you. There's only five indexes that are up over the last six months. There's only five that are in the green. And really, these are kind of flat. Look at high pop. Guess what? Those are cards whose pop count is 200 or greater. It's actually performed better over the last six months than low pop cards and high end cards, and it's not even remotely close. And so all I'm saying is uh, anybody who's telling you to consolidate, if they're coming at you from a perspective of, let me get on the big screen here so we can finish this up. If somebody is screaming to the top of their lungs, consolidate, 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 and they're telling you that because they are telling you that's how you should collect, tell them to F off. It's none of their business how you collect. You should be able to collect 100,000 PSA 6s or CSG 5s or collect four cards. It's your choice. You do whatever the hell you want with your money. It's your money and it's your collection. And if you're talking about collecting, it's what maximizes your joy in the hobby. I do it my way. Some people do it this way. I'm not telling them not to consolidate and do it my way, but I'm sure as hell not gonna listen to somebody tell me how to collect from a collector perspective now if they are saying you should be careful consolidate your money consolidate your collection into uh, fewer cards that mean more now that we think will mean more in the future well we've got that evidence looking at the 86 Fleer Jordan they may be right well it used to be right now we have a little six month trend it's not right and maybe it's people that are thinking the way that I think but I think really what it is is Right now in 2023, people's card budget is significantly smaller than it was in 2021 because they're not selling cards for nut job crazy prices. Like I, I was selling cards for way more than they were worth and doing it as quickly as possible. If it wasn't for PSA, I'd be a bazillionaire. But PSA had all my cards forever. I mean, I made the right call. I was selling the shit out of silver PSA 10s that I bought raw for pennies. Uh, but PSA kept all my cards, so I couldn't cash in. Sad story. Uh -huh. I feel sorry for Cajun Cardboard. Um, but uh, the budgets now for me for all of the people that I know that collect in the hobby, for almost everybody that I talk to, the budget in 2023 is significantly lower. And so I think for that reason, all these eyeballs that were tunnel vision, like there was a lot of people that could buy this $10,000 card or $50,000 card or even $100,000 card, and they're still out there. But in 2021, there may have been, let's say, a room full of 10,000 people. In 2023, it's a room full of like, 80 people, right? That, that room has shrunk. The people that are looking at $100,000 cards, even $10,000 cards, that room, that pool of potential buyers is way lower. When the pool of potential buyers is way, I mean way lower, what does that mean? Demand is down. There's fewer people fighting over that $12,000 card at auction. And so those prices are gonna keep coming down because as each one gets one, there's that many less people that are interested in that card. But when everybody's budget has either plateaued and or gone down, my stocks are in the toilet, my crypto's in the toilet, my cards are in the toilet for the most part over the last two years, like everybody else, that's no secret. When we can now, we wanna keep buying cards. But, but I can't go buy a $50,000 card because I can't go sell three cards and make $50,000. So what am I looking at? I'm looking at $400 cards. What am I doing? I'm transitioning to collecting Jordan PSA 8s. What else am I doing? I'm buying raw Jordans, hoping that I'm going to send them to PSA and get an 8. Right? That shit is fun. It's really, really fun because you could do it ad nauseum. You can do it a lot and you can share a lot of PSA grade reveals and get those emails and send those cards off and clean those cards and do all the stuff that we love to do in the hobby. Um, 
And so I think there's a lot of people who have made that adjustment like I am where they're looking at cards in the low, you know, couple low hundred dollars. I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just telling you I'm watching it happen. I know for a fact it's happened. And let me tell you why. I'm losing my ass. I'm not winning any of these PSA 8 Jordan card auctions that are in the 200 to $800 range. I'm not winning those cards on PWCC Weekly. I'm not winning those cards on eBay. And it's because there's more people in that room than the, the people that used to be in that high-end $50,000 room are now in the $1,000 room. And the people that were in the $1,000 room are in the $250 room because they love collecting cards. They love buying cards. They just can't buy the same cards. And so that's why over the last six months, we're seeing mid and low-end cards, high and mid-pop cards outperform low-pop and high-end cards. That's my theory. Tell me I'm crazy. Comment below. I care what you guys think. Again, this is a lot of rambling. I tried to stay organized, but you know me. I'm never going to be organized. Hopefully, some of this sense, uh, stuff makes sense to you. Hopefully, there's somebody out there who's been watching these videos of people telling them, buy, you know, consolidate your collection into 10 gold prism cards. Only buy a black prism one of ones. Only buy on-card autograph cards of game-worn jerseys of the best players in the league right now. Just buy what you like. Just try to transition more into collecting than investing because ultimately in the long run, uh, you know, in the year 2033, I promise you the cards that matter the most to collectors are the cards that are going to be worth the most. The best cards that are sought after by long-term collectors always end up being the most valuable cards. It just works that way. Look at the Honus Wagner. Look at the Mantle. Look at the Wilt rookie. Look at the Russell rookie. Look at the Cream rookie. Look at the Bird Magic rookie. Look at the Jordan, what the Jordan's done. Y'all can you know, poop on the Jordan all you want to, uh, but the Jordan card's up 150 grand, you know, or, or, or however much it's up, you know, over the last, you know, six years. Uh, it always works out that way. Uh, the cards that matter to collectors are always going to matter to investors. And here's the deal. If collectors' budgets continue to go down, if the economy continues to not be so great, if stocks continue to not do so great, if crypto continues to not do so great, the cards in the past that have not done so great are doing great. <laughs> so it's kind of inversely proportionate. You, you see what I'm saying? So uh, just some interesting stuff to keep in mind. Again, I'm not an economist. I'm not a macroeconomist. Uh, I'm, I'm a lawyer and I'm a finance major. So uh, I like to talk and argue and try to look at things from other people's perspective. Um, and I also like to look at numbers and I'm a math nerd. And uh, so that's why all this data fascinates me, right? And so uh, that's why the 10% investor in me still looks at cards and look for plays. I tried to buy a, a set and break it up the other day on the golden uh, premier auction. I was gonna buy that star set. It was a mixed grade star basketball. It was all 10 of the Jordan 1986 star subset cards. And I was gonna buy it, break them up and then resell them uh, just because I can't resist when I see numbers like that. And of course it ended up going for what it should. So there wasn't that much margin there congrats to whoever got it still an awesome set but uh anyway let me know what you guys think about this video yeah i rambled in hell we're at 37 minutes talking about consolidation uh in a nutshell uh if somebody tells you consolidate consider the source ask why they're telling you to consolidate if it's you know they're telling you how to collect tell them to f off if they're telling you it's best for your investment listen to what they say and why they say it and then process it accordingly um don't feel the the, the necessity to consolidate, even if it is the best for you from an investment perspective. I don't know about you guys. I'm not in cards just to find the cards that are going to go up the most. If I was, I'd go buy freaking Carlos Alcaraz or some freaking, uh, you know, C3PO boner card. I'm not going to buy all that crap. I don't care about that stuff. And I don't care about the money I could make on those dumb cards or the Frank Thomas no name error. No offense to add Midwest vintage card. I know he's a big Frank Thomas collector, but that card means nothing to me. Uh, I'm going to buy the cards that I like, the cards that I love. And I'm buying PSA 8s not because I think they're going to outperform PSA 10 Jordans. I do not think that. I have no reason to believe one way or the other. Uh, I am buying them because more mail days, more uh, sharing, more talking, more education, more fun. Uh, keep collecting. Stay positive in the hobby. Peace. <laughs>